listening to Give God 90, where we're not afraid of the tough biblical questions, because we will dig through the language, the culture, and the history to find the truth revealed in the words of our Creator. so much for letting us share part of your day. My name is Jerry Mitchell, your host for Give God 90. Sitting next to me all dressed up because she had someplace to go is Myra. Hi, everyone. I feel a little uh, underdressed tonight, but that's the good thing about radio. They can't um, <laughs> see how I'm dressed and how you're dressed because we <laughs> sure don't match tonight. No, we don't. Um, <laughs> lots of stuff going on everywhere. Want to welcome all the new folks because apparently we have new people joining us all the time. That um, sometimes they let us know they're here, sometimes they don't. Sometimes I have to wait and see where they're from, and that that's a whole other thing. Now that the demographics are kind of goofed up again, but anyway, welcome to everybody who is new and everybody who's been with us. We certainly do appreciate your time. The uh, a lot of stuff going on, and I'm going to jump right into it. We'll get to the the advertisements later, <laughs> <laughs> as we as we go. Um, we had a notice on Tuesday uh, about the bombings in Kampala, Uganda, and we need to keep this in prayer for a lot of reasons. Uh, the people there, absolutely. The the families that were affected, absolutely. But it goes more than this <clears throat> for some of us you know we think about uganda uh you know and in the united states i'm not even sure it made the news i, I didn't I, I i'm going to confess i do not watch network news okay i get my news sources from various uh websites that i visit um some of them may surprise you and <laughs> some of them may not but around the world, there are, you know, places where news agencies put out their their national news, and we don't get a lot of the the down and dirty kind of stuff that happens around the world in the United States. We're so busy and so we have such tunnel vision, I guess is a better way to say it. We don't see what's going on. But when we got news of this, I looked at it and it's like, wow, this needs to be known. Here's the problem. The United States right now has a very weak federal government administration. Terrorist organizations are being emboldened by that. And let's just let's just say it this way. Because there are many, many nations that look to the United States for a little bit of guidance. How sh you know they have the freedom to do what they're going to do, but they kind of look to the United States like a big brother. How should we proceed? And when you don't have a strong leader and and someone who is going to give guidance and direction that prevents things like this from happening. It's just going to get worse. <clears throat> Let me uh, share with you a little bit from <clears throat> the Monitor in Uganda earlier today, which is a newspaper in Uganda, by the way. So, yeah, you know another source that I get my news from. Uganda intelligence and security agencies have cited three possible motivations for the back-to-back -back bomb attacks in Uganda that they blame on the... Allied Democratic Forces, the ADF, Allied Democratic Forces. Uh, a designated terror group, officials uh, intimated that they are investigating leads that the ADF intends to establish a caliphate run on Sharia law and another possibility that a foreign state is sponsoring the group to cause mayhem to sabotage Uganda's economy. Are you ready for this? The Islamic State, or ISIS, in 2019 named ADF, the Allied Democratic Forces in Uganda, as its affiliate 
baptizing it as the Islamic State Central Africa Province. Uh, ISIS claimed responsibility for the Tuesday bombs blast near Central Police Station and on Parliament Avenue, both in Kampala, which has cumulatively killed seven people so far. Uh, let me stop right there and say we had access to video that will never be seen on American television. It was kind of atrocious, okay? Uh, if they would actually start showing this and showing what happens, maybe people would be a little more apt to not do these things. <clears throat> uh, three of the dead in Tuesday blast, according to police, were suicide bombers. Well, yeah, okay? Naturally, they're going... I don't know, I'm not even sure why they count those, but they do. It goes on that there are also clues that the ADF activated its terrorist cells in the country in order to avenge the killing of its agents by Uganda security in the aftermath of the failed assassination of Works Minister General uh, Katumba Wamala. And if I ruined that name, I'm sorry. Uh, the group, according to multiple sources, managed to quietly recruit are you listening to this? Quietly recruit children from Kiazanga and eastern Uganda and indoctrinate them in training camps in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. These are radicals. Okay? These are not typical uh, Muslim folks that you would, would see on the street every day. In fact, in Uganda, when the cry went out, uh, that this had happened, they you know, they were warning the average uh, Muslim mosques as, as much as they were warning the Christian churches, as much as they were warning anybody else, that you have to be careful who's coming through your door. You have to be aware. And here is where I'm going to reinforce what I just said. The biggest reason they're picking these places that they pick are because they think these are places that nobody cares about. Let me say that again. They think these are places that nobody cares about where they can start another foothold of, and, and reign of terror and without strong big, big brother leadership either uh, out of the United States, China, the Soviet Union, or Central Europe, uh, European Union, if you don't have the world looking and squashing this stuff, it's going to get worse. Of course, we know it's going to get worse anyway, but that's a whole other story and a lesson for another day. <clears throat> I would really like to spend a lot more time on that, but I've got... I, I want to go through something tonight that I've been asked about a few times. And that is, how is it that believers are so <laughs> so willing to stick their head in the sand and not pay attention to what's going on in the world? Um, <laughs> we you know, we get this we get this uh, stick your head in the sand from an ostrich, and it's really a legend, and it, it began we believe from a guy uh, way back at the Believe it or not, he was a Roman scholar uh, in the first century A.D., lived about the time Yeshua did. His name was Pliny. They called him Pliny the Elder. He died in about 79 A.D. Um, <laughs> he, <laughs> he died attempting to understand the eruption of Mount Vesuvius as it erupted. <clears throat> Before he died, though, he wrote one of the first natural history encyclopedias, uh, which is a 37-book uh, volume, and he attempted to, to catalog every piece of Roman knowledge that they had. Uh, in one of his books, he mentions the ostrich's head-in-the-sand habits. Uh, and he, he basically comes out and said they imagine when they have their head in the, in the sand and their uh, neck in the bush, the whole of their body is concealed. Now, why would we believe that from a guy who is attempting to study a volcano 
as it was erupted, erupting. You know, he, to me, this kind of goes along with someone who would stick their hand in the fire while asking the question, is that fire hot? Okay? We know people that have done that. Just saying. Just saying. At any rate, an ostrich does not stick its head in the sand to hide. It sticks its head in the sand to move some dirt around as it's making its nest. You know, ostriches are very large, very powerful birds. They can't fly. They can't jump up in a tree to make a nest. So this is how they make their nest. But it leads us, uh, knowing that, it leads us somewhere else. And we've read part of this before, but not all of this portion in its entirety. And it's important. It comes from Isaiah 29, verses 10 through 16. For the Lord has poured out on you a spirit of deep sleep. He has shut your eyes, O prophets. He has covered your heads, O seers. And the entire vision will be to you like the words sealed in a scroll. If it, if it is handed to someone to read, he will say, I cannot, because it is sealed. Or if the scroll is handed to one unable to read, he will say, I cannot read. Therefore the Lord said, These people draw near to me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is but rules taught by men. Therefore, I will again confound these people with wonder upon wonder. The wisdom of the wise will vanish, and the intelligence of the in intelligent will be hidden. Woe to those who dig deep to hide their plans from the Lord. In darkness they will do their works and say, Who sees us? Who will know? You have turned things upside down, as if the potter were regarded as clay. Shall what is formed say to him who is who formed it? He did not make me. Can the pottery say to the potter? He has no understanding. That's a whole lot to take in, isn't it? <clears throat> you know, today, people all over the world who have access to a Bible, they say it's too difficult to understand. Oh, we'll never be able to get to the bottom of this. They think it's filled with some secret code. Um, <laughs> I don't know why, but, but you know, oh, there's a secret code. We don't know the answer. We don't. We can't break the code. I think I mentioned that in Tradition to Truth, by the way. So if you want more on that, there it is. Now, here's the, the sad part. There are people who want access to be able to read it, but they can't get their hands on a Bible for various reasons, whether it's you know they live in an area where you can't get them, where they're not allowed to be owned. There are places in the world to do that. Maybe the only access they have is to one in a community. There are places that are like that too. And <clears throat> while I'm on that subject, there are folks out there who are willing uh, to send Bibles to places where they're allowed to go. Uh, I used to know some people that would take them to places they weren't allowed to go, but that's another story. Anyway, you know, the, the, the folks who want access can't get it because they, they have these roadblocks in front of them. You know, they say... I can't read. They they have no choice but to continue with their traditions that they know because it's all they have. The people who know... You, have you ever knew that you didn't know something but you were looking for an answer and you, you couldn't find it? Think about that. The, there are people out there who know they need to connect with the Creator... They've got this desire, but they're being prevented by other people from doing so. And 
we need to start thinking about these folks as being you know persecuted believers they know they've got to have something but they can't get to it right so one of the questions we need to honestly answer is other than the almighty himself who's preventing these people from being able to read and understand the bible Okay, we know that the Almighty has told us what he's going to do. You might have just read that. He's going to cause the people who reject him to suffer some things. But remember what happens to those who suppress the sacred word of our Creator. Uh, listen as she reads Isaiah twenty nine eighteen through 20. At that time, the deaf will hear the words in, the, in a book. Instead of having darkness and gloom, the blind will see. The Lord will make the poor people happy. They will rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. Then the people without mercy will come to an end. Those who do not respect God will disappear, and those who enjoy doing evil will be gone. That doesn't sound like you want to be somebody who enjoys doing evil doesn't sound like somebody who um, wants to reject the Almighty. The deaf, now, you really need to pay attention. The deaf will hear the words in a book. Did you catch how that's, that's actually pretty very, very, very close to what the original says? The deaf will hear the words in the book. The blind will see. The poor will be content. <clears throat> but mercy from the evildoers will stop. They will be destroyed. What the Almighty is saying in that passage is he will prevent all the people from under... I'm sorry. What the Almighty is saying in the passage is not that he's going to prevent everyone from being able to understand what's in the Bible or having access to a Bible, but he's going to prevent those who reject him from having the understanding that true believers have. Did I say that right? Okay, I said that right. Good. In other words, if if you don't have the faith that it takes, you know, and you're just kind of one of these um, lukewarm folks, as they call them, right? I can't remember which which book that comes out of now. It's somewhere in the New Testament. Um, it's better to be. I'd rather have you hot or cold than lukewarm. I think it's Revelation. Anyway, <clears throat> if you're one of those, you're you're kind of worse off than if you're hot or cold. <clears throat> what he's looking for is, you know, there, there's no gray area. When the Almighty speaks, you have to stand on one side of the line or the other. You, you can't... You, know, you can't stand across it. You, you can't lean and push into it because it, there's no give. You have to be on one side or the other. And what he's saying is he will prevent the people who reject him from having the understanding that true believers have. <clears throat> so that even if you have this desire to have a relationship with the Almighty, but you don't know how, you don't, you know, you don't have access. You're forbidden access to Scripture. You're forbidden access to His Word. But you know you need it. You're going to be okay because you're searching. You're diligently trying to find it. You want what He's offering. It's the people who are preventing you from accessing it that you know, the mercy will stop and they will be destroyed. Why is this so important? Because if you claim that you serve and represent the creator of the universe, but you continually use the excuse that the Bible's too hard to understand, or you need to come to the realization, you're probably not living the lifestyle that enables you to understand it, okay, for one. If you happen to be one of these people who just flat out reject what the Almighty has to say, or you try to... Uh, <laughs> You try to twist it and bend it to suit yourself. That's rejection. You either you either take what he has to say and you stand with it, or you stand on the other side of it. Because 
you you can't stretch it. It doesn't stretch. The word of the creator is the word of the creator. You can't twist it. You can't bend it. You can try, but it doesn't work that way. If you don't have the understanding that you need to look around today and see what's going on in the world and say, you know what, that fits scripture here. We can plug this in here with the, with the information we have. You know, uh, a few weeks ago we talked about uh, there is a university in Australia that basically named uh, Damascus as the least inhabitable city in the world. That's the Isaiah 17 passage, right? Damascus will cease to be inhabitable. If you can learn how to see and plug those things in, but I will say this, the best way to be able to do that is not to watch typical like USA Network News type shows because all you're going to get is the the propaganda that they want to show you now. <clears throat> the, you're not getting what's going on. Then you have the other side of that. You have the, the people who want to stick their head in the sand. I'll be okay if all I do is stay hidden in my prayer closet and let the world revolve around me. Well, I think we've said when we do that, I think I hit pretty hard on the concept that you're not investing in the kingdom when you do that, right? If you're not actually out there involved with people and all you're doing is stuck, you know, you're, or, or maybe, and I'm, I'm going to take some slack for the for flack for this. You know, if you're one of these people who hide behind a, uh, a false name in social media, and you just kind of attack others. You see where I'm going with that, right? You know, maybe you don't have the understanding you need to be able to invest in the kingdom. Maybe you need to do some things we're going to talk about here shortly. In Deuteronomy uh, 29, 29 says, The secret things belong to the Creator. But those things that are revealed belong to us. Now here's where it gets interesting because Moses didn't stop there. He says, The secret things belong to the Almighty. But the things which are revealed belong to us and our children forever so that we can do all the words of the law. In other words, the things he tells us are not just to make us feel good. They're there to help us be able to follow his instructions, to live the way he designed us to live. There's some things that he keeps from us that we really don't need to know. You know, how many angels did he create? I don't know. How many divine beings did he create? I don't know. We don't need to know those things. <clears throat> when, you know, for Christians, the big question is, when's Jesus coming back, Right. I don't know. We don't need to know. Because here's the secret. If you're living the way you're designed to live, you're already going to be ready for him. It's that simple. Right? But see, I'm not going down that road. I got a lot more to go. And I don't want to take that much time tonight. <clears throat> here's here's um, another one. Deuteronomy 30, verses 11 through 16. This command I give you today is not too hard for you. It is not beyond what you can do. It is not up in heaven. You do not have to ask who will go up to heaven and get it for us. Then we can obey it and keep it. It is not on the other side of the sea. You do not have to ask who will go across the sea and get it. You will tell it to us. Who will tell it to us? Then we can keep it. No, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart, so you may obey it. 
Look, today I offer you life and success, death and destruction. I command you today to love the Lord your God. Do what he wants you to do. Keep his commands, his rules, his laws. Then you will live and grow in number. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are going to take as your own. Okay, now, <clears throat> some of the long-time listeners may remember when I said that an excuse is nothing more than a reason for failure. And it's true. You know, failure to hear his voice and do his commands will result in the final death. It, it's that simple. It, you know, if you say, but I didn't know, your reason for failure is you didn't know either because you rejected it or you didn't have access. Now, if you didn't have access, guess who's going to know that? Yeah, the one who's looking at you saying, why, uh, why didn't you do these things? Because he already knows. We, he already knows. The failure to hear his voice, do his commands, does result in death. It's that simple. Good news is we're all for the way back. But it comes with certain conditions. Okay? <clears throat> yeah, you know, a shepherd... Here's, here's a cool thing about... Most people don't realize this about shepherds. Sheep are not just um, mutton and wool, okay? <laughs> That's a good part of them, but they're more than mutton and wool. And a shepherd does not keep a sheep that will continually create problems. I know this firsthand, all right? Um, <laughs> a long time ago, before Meyer and I were married, I had a few sheep. And I had a ram that was really, really good. The breed was Suffolk. Um, and this ram was nice, big, just well put together. From a breeding standpoint, he was almost perfect. Um, when, when it didn't matter what you that he was bred to, mine or anybody else's, every you had at least twins, most of the time triplets, Sometimes they had quadruplets. Now, as in production uh, agriculture, he was top dog, okay? But he developed some bad habits. He would actually run over anybody that walked into a sheep pen, okay? he If he saw you with a feed bucket or anything else, if he saw you walk in there just empty-handed, he was coming at you. He was. He got mean. You know, he would kick you. He would bite you. You know, when it was time to shear him, he would fight you every time. And while that is, you know, he's his bloodline and all that. It was good. Uh, his genetics were great for building a stock for producing lambs. But his actions were not conducive in a flock of sheep. It's not the kind of uh, <laughs> manners you want from a sheep. Um, he was sold to somebody that thought they could handle him. But they couldn't. He was rebellious and he rejected instruction. And he was no longer welcome among the flock. Now, does that sound familiar to anybody? Yeah, he was a sheep. But he was no longer welcome in the flock. The shepherd knew he needed to be pulled out. Whether it was me, or the next owner, or the next owner. Does it remind you of something that we read in Matthew chapter 7? Not everyone who cries out to me, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, 
that only he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will cry out to me on that day, Lord, did we not prophesy your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Our Creator will allow the lawless to demonstrate His glory so that His wonders and His miracles are known to all of mankind. But those who are so arrogant as to think they can use His holy name for personal gain will be destroyed. Those who try to get rich in His word using the Creator as nothing more than a tool for personal gain will suffer the same fate as those who reject Him. Now, I need to be careful here because this kind of pertains to me just a little bit what I'm going to say. Does this mean that, that a true Bible teacher is destined to be destitute? No. A worker's worth is wages. In Leviticus 19.13 says, You must not defraud your neighbor or rob him. You must not withhold uh, until morning the wages do a hired hand. Deuteronomy 24.15 says, uh, you are to pay his wages each day before sunset because he is poor and depends on them. Otherwise, he may cry out to uh, the Almighty and you will be guilty of sin. When somebody guides you to that narrow gate, you offer them what finding that narrow gate is worth to you. When somebody's able to explain how to repent, offer them what it's worth to you. When somebody introduces you to your Creator, Offer them what that relationship is worth to you. When somebody shows you, <clears throat> excuse me, how to be made whole, what is being made whole worth to you? Do you see a pattern here? You know, if you go to the doctor, well, in the United States, if you go to the doctor, uh, somebody else pays for it now, right? Because everybody has to be on some type of insurance plan. But when I was young, if you went to the doctor, and, you know, it didn't matter whether he fixed you or not. You paid him for his time. When you go to uh, any professional, right, You they get paid for you, their time. If somebody is going to take their time and actually show you step by step how to get to the narrow gate, step by step how to follow the instructions that the Almighty has for us, what's that worth? Seriously, what's it worth? What's your what's your eternity worth to you? Here's where I'm going with this. Are you willing to pull your head out of the sand, look around and say, there's more to what's going on than what I have been told all my life? <clears throat> Are you, are you willing to actually be alert, be aware, be, be one of these folks who are willing to look at these uh, events going on in today's world and look at Scripture and be able to plug in the information that we have with the possibility of where this fits. Now I'm not I'm not talking about being, you know, an end of the world revelation expert here, okay? That's not what I'm saying. Peter tells us we have to be willing to be to give an answer. Ready and willing to give an answer. And when people ask questions because you know, I'm I'm going to tell you you get asked a lot of questions you can do begin to develop your answers based on the scripture you know. You don't have to know it all. Nobody can know it all. But you begin to develop your answers based on the information you have. And the more aware of these things you are, the better off that the person who asks the questions is going to be because you're going to have an answer that they can understand. You're going to be given the words. You can learn how to help somebody else 
live the way the Almighty designed them to live if you're living the way the Almighty designed you to live. Now, if you need some help with that, guess where you can go? GiveGodMoney.com. It's that simple. <clears throat> you can go there and, you know, that's one of the things we do is try to, to you know, that's why we say learning to live the way the Creator designed us to live, right? Learn how to repent. Learn what it means to repent. Learn what it means to wake up every day and figure out that, you know, before I get up, let's take a minute. When you go to bed, before you go to sleep, let's take a minute. That's how it starts. And you slowly learn how to involve the Almighty in each and every aspect of your life. The, lux the luxury of time is something we are running out of. If you look around, you know, like I say, I, I am not an end-of-the-world kind of a person. But if you look around, it's winding down. You can learn how to live the way you're designed to live. Now, um, I'm going to be honest with you. In the last few weeks, several weeks, almost months, I have kind of been <clears throat> not updating the website like I should have been. Uh, <laughs> last spring, we were starting to put some, some new videos out. And we were doing good at it. Right, we got a couple out that are really, really good. I think uh, they're actually on there, and then that got interrupted because um, I started to do something I swore I wasn't going to do, and I started. I I'm right, written, had written another book, um, "Inheriting Lies," which is almost complete. It is actually in the editing phase now. And hopefully, <laughs> slowly editing yeah, it is. It's easier to write it than it is to edit it. I'm just saying. Um, hopefully, that will be out. It's not coming out before Christmas. Because there's just not enough time. Uh, but there, it will be out just after the first of the year, hopefully. And then we can get back in the swing of things. And, and ho hopefully... <laughs> Put that one behind me for a little bit, maybe. <laughs> but as that goes, you know how uh, that were. If you've ever uh, been faithful enough to do something like that, you know how that works. And hopefully you will. You know, once you begin to live the lifestyle you're designed to live, you'll figure it out. You're going to understand that you need to repent because the kingdom is just on the other side of your fingertips. That's what at hand, that's what that, that phrase at hand in the Bible means. It means as far as you can stretch your arm, it's just on the other side of your fingertips, just barely out of your reach because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. <clears throat> are you willing to do what it takes are you willing to wake up are you willing to stand on hopefully the side that the almighty needs you to stand on if you are are you willing to help somebody else do that and maybe just maybe You'll catch a glimpse of something even, well, I should say it this way. You're going to catch a glimpse of something that's going to be even better later. Right? Right. All right. Did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us. And don't be an ostrich. Don't be an ostrich. Pull your head out of the sand. <sighs> Unless you're a politician. <laughs> then just suffocate. I shouldn't have said that, but... Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Until Monday. Many, many blessings, everyone.